Hello Wizards, this is Colin. I recently added a beautiful baby girl to my family and now I'm back with another data lit tutorial. Oh, and you've probably noticed, I'm also suffering from a slight style transfer accident. You'll learn more about this when we get into deep neural networks. I've got to warn you, this technology is dangerous because I can't figure out how to undo it. So, ignoring my permanent purple and yellow makeup, it's time to learn. Today, we're going to dive into the world of natural language processing, or NLP for short. Humans intuitively understand language. If someone asks you to order a pizza, you automatically get a picture of pizza in your mind, and you know what to do. But computers aren't so lucky. So how can computers make sense of human language? How do you get a robot made to parse English instructions into machine language? How can we analyze large amounts of natural language data and make sense of it? For example, to know who's talking smack about the school of AI and Twitter and who loves us. Well, that's where natural language processing comes in. Computers do understand math and numbers very well. So our goal with NLP is to transform human language into a mathematical model and then do something useful with it. This week is all about unsupervised learning, which means you don't need to label your data at all. The algorithm is going to analyze the data and clump stuff that's similar together. In this tutorial, we are going to discover how to automatically catalog topics discussed in a body of text. But before we get into the complexities of language, let's look at a much simpler version of the algorithm we are going to apply. Say you're a Korean barbecue franchise and you're moving to a new city. You've got the budget to open up three locations. You've got a marketing list of thousands of people who have shown interest in Asian food. Where do you put your restaurants so they are central to the most potential customers? Well, that's exactly what k-means clustering is designed to solve. Let's look at the algorithm. Step 1. Choose the number k of clusters, in our case three locations. Step 2. Select k random points anywhere on your city grid. Step 3. Assign each data point to the closest centroid. You could use Euclidean distance, driving time, or any arbitrary closeness score. Step four, compute the new centroid of each cluster, averaging the X and Y coordinates. Step five, reassign each data point to the closest centroid. Repeat from step four until no more reassignment is necessary. Note that the algorithm starts with a random initialization. It then continuously iterates until we reduce the error as low as it will go. And in this case, we can go to zero error where there is no further need to reassign clusters and boom you've got your locations so now good luck with all the zoning and permits all right let's move on from a simple geographic problem to a more complex human language problem topic modeling is a type of statistical modeling for discovering abstract topics that occur in a collection of documents and we're going to do this using an iterative algorithm combined with some probability distribution magic Specifically, the technique we're going to learn is called latent Dirichlet allocation. It sounds like Greek to me, but once you understand what those individual words mean, it'll make a lot more sense. Latent. In statistics, latent variables from Latin, present participle of lateo, lie hidden, as opposed to observable variables, are variables that are not directly observed, but are rather inferred through a mathematical model from other variables that are observed directly measured, Wikipedia. Dirichlet. By now we all know what a normal distribution looks like and how it works. A Dirichlet distribution is very similar, but it has a useful property that all values added together sum to one. For example, 0 0.2 and 0 0.8, or 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Dirichlet noise is a sample of random values between 0 and 1, which all add up to 1. And allocation, the act of allocating, to a portion for a specific purpose or to particular persons or things, from Merriam-Webster. So now let's put these words together to see what they mean. We're using a mathematical model based on probability distributions, Dirichlet, to infer hidden, that is non-observable variables, and allocate words into topics. Specifically, LDA represents documents as a mixture of topics that spit out words with certain probabilities. We've got documents filled with words which we want to categorize into k number of topics. 
Now, remember the microwave analogy. You don't need to know how the microwave works to make good popcorn. There are several Python libraries which have LDA functionality pre-baked for you. All you've got to do is put the data in and press a button. But I also want to leave you with a little understanding of what's going on under the hood. So let's do a simplified overview of what's happening in the algorithm. Step one, choose the total number of topics K you want to discover in your set of documents. Step two, go through each document and randomly assign each word in the document to one of K topics. Does this sound familiar so far? We've initialized random topics, now let's improve them. Step three, for each document D, for each word W in the document. For each topic T, we're going to compute two things. Number one, the proportion of words in document D currently assigned to topic T. And number two, the proportion of assignments to topic T over all documents that come from this word. All right, next we're going to reassign the word a new topic, choosing the topic with the probability, the P of topic T in document D times the P of word W in topic T. This is essentially the probability that topic T has generated word W. This is where you get a Dirichlet distribution as the probabilities across K topics will all add to one. And finally, step four, we repeat the above step many times until the topics are changing very little. You'll be left with each word in each document assigned to a topic, and you should notice that the topics seem intelligently chosen, and they'll each carry a common theme. Cool beans. Now, let's learn how to microwave popcorn. Your oven does have a Python interface, does it? But before we jump into the code, let's do a quick crash course in data pre-processing for NLP. We've got to make it easy for the computer to turn words into a mathematical model. Our input data is going to be a Kaggle data set with a million news headlines, and we're going to process these to discover topics. The first pre-processing step is called tokenization. We split the text into sentences and the sentences into words. Next, we filter out all the stop words. These are the common words like Ah, uh, and the, this, that, too. And additionally, we're going to blanket remove any word shorter than three letters. These don't contribute a lot to topic discovery and would only add noise to the results. Step three, the words are lemmatized. That means that third person words are changed to first person and verbs in the past and future are changed to the present tense. For example, the sentence, he walked to the park would become, I walk park. Step four. Finally, the words are stemmed or reduced to their root form. For example, the word laziness is reduced to just lazy, L-A-Z-I. All right, time to deep dive into the code. And since we're using a Kaggle dataset, let's use a Kaggle notebook. First step, we load the CSV into pandas and print out a few lines to make sure it's loaded right. For the heavy lifting, we're going to use a library called GenSim, which is specialized for topic modeling, like what we're doing, document indexing, and similarity retrieval on large bodies of text. And for the pre-processing steps, we're going to use NLTK or Natural Language Toolkit. The first bit of code is just importing all the dependencies and initializing the random seed so we can get deterministic results. Next, it's time to start working with the data. Let's write some functions that will perform the pre-processing steps we went over above on each document. Now, before we do all million documents, let's preview just one to make sure everything is set up correctly. Everything looks good to me. Finally, let's map the million documents through the preprocess function. This will take a few minutes, so it's a good time to grab some coffee or tea. When it's done, you'll see the results for the first 10 documents come up. The LDA algorithm is all about the probability of word occurrence, so the next step is to transform our data into a bag of words model. This is essentially a dictionary containing the number of times each word appears in the training set. The basic dictionary gives us a mapping from integer IDs to actual words. The dictionary also has a property called DFS document frequencies, which allows us to look up the total number of occurrences of that word across our entire data set. We'll take the first 10 entries in the dictionary and print the ID, the word, and the frequency. The next step is to filter the tokens. We'll remove anything that occurs in less than 15 documents or in more than half the documents in our corpus. Then we'll create a bag of words for each document. 
This will store the total number of words in the document and how many times each word occurs. Each document results in a list of tuples. For each word, we have the integer ID of the word and the number of times it occurs in that document. You can also look up the actual word by its ID in the dictionary. Okay, we've now prepared our popcorn to be microwaved. It's time to hit the button and watch the magic. We pass in the bag of words corpus, the number of topics desired, in this case 10, and the ID to word dictionary. We'll spawn four worker processes and take two passes over all the data. This will take a couple minutes. And finally, let's list the topics generated along with the most important words occurring in each topic. Note, we've only done two passes. The more time you allow it to run, you'll probably get better results. Now, for any item in our data set, we can get a list of the closest matching topics. The LDA model gives us a list of topic indexes and scores for each document in the collection. So all we have to do is sort it by the highest score. And last but not least, we can use our train model to evaluate unseen documents. First, we've got to run the document through our preprocessor and generate the bag of words. Now we can score potential topics just as above. And before I go, I'm going to tell you about one more way to improve the results. We use the bag of words algorithm to model our documents. There's a slightly more nuanced way to model word probability called TF-IDF or Term Frequency, Inverse Document Frequency. This provides a better reflection of how important a word is by reducing the value of very common words. I won't go into the details here, but I will link a tutorial in the description so you can try this out yourself and see if it improves the results. All right, wizards, that's it for this week's tutorial. Now let's quickly check out some of the awesome entries in our data visualization contest. The first prize goes to Guilhame Bisimwa for an interactive dashboard to track an Ebola outbreak in Congo. We can track confirmed cases and confirmed deaths by province by date. It would be really cool if you had a slider to change the date to easily see how the data changes over time. And below there are several other really cool interactive data views. The second prize goes to Fernando Chica for telling a really cool story. In this case, he used chemistry and data science to rule out a possible crime suspect. There is a crime scene with broken glass, but no other useful evidence. Nearby, some broken glass was found with a fingerprint recovered. The question is if the glass of the crime scene and the nearby glass with the fingerprint are indeed the same. Fernando applies a chemical analysis of the glass and visualizes the results, which go on to show that the evidence glass is very different than that found at the crime scene. This means the fingerprint is unrelated and can be discarded. There are several other submissions which are really, really cool, and I encourage you to check them out. You can find all the links in the comments of the data visualization homework assignment lesson. All right, this is Colin Scow, and I'll see you again soon. Hopefully, I'll figure out how to style transfer back to my original self. This is kind of ugly. Meanwhile, keep that data lit.